I think you're going to have to find some rebellious teachers. I think you're going to have to find teachers um, who are willing to be ostracized and crucified, as I have been, for doing things differently for the sake of the students. I think you're going to have to find teachers who are willing to spend enormous amounts of time. You talk about our global changes. One of the problems is as we speed up, everybody's looking for the magic bullet and the instant solution. Instant coffee, instant shopping, instant movies. I've never found instant education or instant scholarship. I think to be good at anything takes thousands of hours of disciplined practice. My job as a teacher is to show the children a huge menu of things you can do with your life. Maybe you want to be a gardener or a mechanic or a mathematician or an architect. Once you find out what it is that you want to do, then work really hard to achieve that. And I set an example by working really hard as a teacher. So I mentioned great expectations. My students and I will sit together for about 50 hours reading through it. And when people watch me, they say, wow, this takes a long time. And I say, yes, it does. When we perform a Shakespeare play, and you're going to think I'm kidding, but I can actually document this. We spend cumulatively together as a group 60,000 hours of rehearsal before we perform after a year. Of course they're good because they have so much fun rehearsing together. The rehearsals are much more fun than the play. But all those hours of practice is why they're really good. So when people say, gee, race kids are super geniuses, no, they're just kids. But they're committed to what they do and they work really hard at it. To make a global change, we need to have a conversation where teachers understand that this is very hard work. And if you want your students to understand Hamlet, you're going to have to read it with them. You can't just send them home and read it. Now in schools, they actually have this at my school, they have these um, state books with abridged versions. So they have Anne Frank, four pages long. It's four pages of the book. Fourth graders read it, and what do they do? They go home and they tell their parents, I've read Anne Frank. The school documents, we have Anne Frank at our school. And everybody goes, oh, that's very nice. But they don't have Anne Frank at the school. They haven't read Anne Frank. And I feel like the guy shouting out the emperor has no clothes. So I don't mean to be you know, gloomy about this, but I think the most important thing we need is honesty. And the honest thing the globe has to think about is if we're going to do this, we have to put in the time.